Okay, so when you first open the file, you'll see different things. The very first one that you need to notice is that we have these properties, hair wave and line plus smooth. So what that means is that if you are working in the viewport, you can you know scroll this and you will not see anything happen. However, if you activate the hair wave, this will automatically turn on the entire visibility for all the modifiers that are working in the hair. And therefore, when you scroll, you can see that the hair will wave. Now, this is important because when you animate, you want to make your character appear lively, appear, you know, like it's animated and the hair being still, it won't cut it. However, if you have a wave modifier like this, then your character, whatever action it, she's doing, it's going to be working. So you can check out the uh, modifiers there. I'm going to switch it off so that we can work faster in the viewport. The second thing is the line plus smooth. These are subdivision modifier plus line artwork and outlines. So that comes all at once. And what that means is that if you click here so that the viewport will activate everything. By the way, this is the camera that you're seeing right here. I'm going to come off out of the camera, you will see that it is set to transparent. I think it's the render properties. Yes. You come down here to film. If you uncheck transparent, then you will have the regular background there. However, we need transparent because we want to activate the compositing tree. I have um, created this compositing tree so you can see how it can mix uh, the lines, how it can mix the background, how it can mix even the objects separated by masking cryptomats, as we've seen in previous videos here in my channel. So that's that and everything has been labeled so you can check that out. Last, if you come here and activate the camera view, then you will have the entire render compositing tree perform on the camera. This is why if you press zero in a numpad, you come back to the camera view and then you can see the background, which is basically labeled here. So whatever background you want to put, just delete this one, invoke your new background, and then you will have it. So back, back to this property toggle, if you click here on line plus smooth, then everything will, you know, draw the lines, do the eyelash over here. And by the way, that is done using line art. This is native Blender 4.3. No extra add-ons have been added. So therefore, you can see the results right in the viewport. Look at that. Eyelash over hair. And the way that was done, I've published a video about it with the Viper Sting model. In this case, in Cynthia Wave, what I, what I did was just to select the front hair. In this case, this one right here. I came here into the materials activated the line art and then I told it is a material mask set, set to channel 2, level 2 on mask 2. That's all I did for the hair. And what I did for the eyes as explained in the Viper Sting video was to set it to its own collections, in this case eyes, eyelashes, where I placed the model of the eyelashes plus the eyes inside a single collection. And then I added a line art artwork and the properties for that, as you can see right here, it's targeting that collection itself. It doesn't matter if it's inside that collection, all it cares for it's the objects in it. And this is not an object, this is a curve modifier, if we can call it that way. And in that I use the occlusion ranging from 0 to 14 because apparently this single object has different many objects. And this works sort of like the depth pixel that we have in Unreal Engine. I need to do a comparison video about that in the future uh, because I found out after using Unreal how in Blender this thing is actually working. So yeah, that's that. And then I activated Material Mask for this uh, line art modifier targeting the second layer as we did with the hair and then calling it with an exact match. And then I activated the 0 to 14 range because if you have a lower range, then it will intersect with um, the nearest objects. Let's say if we want to have five, and as you can see, it is not enough for the ray to you know go through the hair because we have many different strands. 14 to be exact and that's why it's um, done this way all right so that's five minutes into the video by the way the way you access those toggles is by selecting your rig in object view okay 
very important and then come into the end property panel and then you will see right above the controllers for the rigify rig the line plus smooth uncheck that that's a handy toggle and once we select our model go to post mode and in post mode you will automatically get the shelf assets if you can call it that way i'm going to select everything alt r alt s alt g to reset her position and now i can do stuff like and this is very important because this was not demonstrated back when i published the blue eyes white dragon video where we first met the post library applications and mine this was way before it was made public in blender if you are a supporting patron that you got that video around one or three weeks i think from the official release or one or two months i don't quite remember though that was quite some time ago anyways the post library so if you come here into the hand and right click on it then you will see that you can apply the post or applies the post flipped that is to the other side of the body or to blend the pose or blend the pose flip basically those are like negative operations let's go with the first one so that you can understand what's going on so if i click this one the right hand goes to fist mode okay so i'm going to undo that and now i'm going to right click on this apply the pose flipped guess what the left hand now it's being um, applied with the fist pose i'm going to undo that now if i right click on this one and this one's is a very important operation blend pose flipped or blend pose i'm going to blend pose flipped that means i'm going to be working with the left fist so if you if i left click on that you will see that there is a slider at the top of the viewport you can see it right there and if i don't do anything except move the mouse left and right i can move that slider operation so that if i hit 100 percent then the pose will be completed however if i go back i can also reverse the order of the fist instead of being you know contracted finger pose it's going to be an expanded finger pose anyways you can play with this let's say that we want this 37 percent now i'm going to do the same but to the other side blend pose and of course i get my slider automatically and then i'm going to go to 37 percent as well or approximately so i'm going to leave it right there 37 left click so right click, select, slide, left click. That's how you do it. All right, so let's talk about the body poses. So if you click here, you will automatically get the pose that it's by default. This one's going to be flying around. This one's going to be kind of walking. And the same thing can happen with the head or the face. So you have these default poses. For example, if she's surprised, you can just click there and that's it. Right click, one pose. I get my slider and then I'm going to be scrolling to the left side or to the right side. So you can see how it, it expands or contracts depending on the pose that I'm doing, but you can see it it's working. The face, let's uh, finish this with the face. So I'm going to be selecting this one, this model, and you have this character lights, which are including or excluding objects. In our case, we have something called facial light, which is this. Let me just switch to full light view so you can see this. Um, in this case, we have this full front face light, which of course has its own parameters. In this case, 13.8. It doesn't have a, any shadows. Uh, the influence is just for the diffuse. I don't want to affect the glossy transmission or any volume scatter. And I don't have a, a custom distance. I just switch it on, switch the shadows off. And how do I include the face? You come here into the object properties of the light. And down here in the shading tab, let me just shading tab, you can open this and you will see light linking or shadow linking. I'm not going to go into shadow linking. I'm just going to refer the light linking. So what do I have here? I have two objects, the face and the suborbicular shade, which you commonly would call the Rembrandt triangle, which is this little triangle here. I call it suborbital shade because, you know, it's under the eyes. It's an anatomical term. If you select the facial light and then you come into shading under light linking, you just press this button plus and then it's going to ask you who do you want to add. That's option number one on how to add objects specifically to only obey one light. 
And the second option is to directly drag the object from the outliner. In my case, it's the face. So you may need to open a second, I don't know, let me just open it here. So you may need to open a secondary window here and target your face. So there it is, it's face. And now I'm going to select the light. And from there, you can just drag face and drop it over here. So that's how you would do it because obviously in one single panel, it's not going to be enough. And then you can see this is a checked box as well as the suborbicular shade. Those two are only obeying on this one. When you don't want anything to be lit with the current light, you uncheck it. So that's what's going on with the sun, which is by the way, the directionally driven light. In this case, I added the face to the sun, but I'm not checking it. So the sun sees the face, but chooses not to lit it. Okay, so that's why it's unlit. So yeah, this becomes a game of adding for every light you have in the scene. You need to add the same object for the light that you want to be lit on with a check. And then you have to add that same object to all of the other lights that you do not want them to lit your object. So that's how it works. And therefore this um, body, it's only lit by the sun. I'm going to grab the sun right now. It's in full shade. And from there, I'm going to press RR and rotate it. And as you can see, there is no shadow in the face because the face is only driven by this light linking facial light that we previously mentioned. Now I'm going to do the inverse. I'm going to select the facial light and then I'm going to dim its power like 13. I don't know, let's place one, see that? It's kind of a shadow now. It's not really powerful and illuminating the face. Whoops, that was too fast. You can see it there, okay? So it's only affecting the light. So let's go back to 13, by the way, which is a nice number. And now the advantage of this is that you can, you know, move the light to whatever position you want and you will actually see how the shadows will perform in your model. And yeah, those are the four important features that we now have in Blender 4.3. Thank you very much. I know the video has been kind of a little bit long, but I wanted to show you all the entire features that this have and saving the best for last. So hair, you can see the hair right there. And we also have an additional collection down here, which is hair halo, which by the way is open or active. I'm going to deactivate it. And that's the halo that you used to see up here because we have a secondary layer, which by the way, I just did this, press this and copy settings. So this copied everything from the first original layer, which is view layer. By the way, if you change view layers name, uh, Blender will, will crash. This happened in Blender 4.0, 4.1, 4.2. 4 I don't have time to report guys. Every time I do, they say, oh, it's a known uh, issue. And I'm really tired of that. However, don't change this uh, layer name. You can change every, any other name, you know, down that list, but not the first one. Anyways, view layers. Yeah, so in that view layer, that's uh, everything we have in the scene. But then I have Halo, which only has this active. And as you can see, that's the Halo. And that is the reason why whenever you press F12 to render, you get a perfectly driven halo let me just switch from the camera by the way you have another camera and the way you change that is by clicking this icon and it will automatically switch i'm going to go back into this position and i think this is a wide camera yeah it's a wide camera well it should be a wide camera why didn't it save the okay that's a wide camera we were looking for you can see that there is no halo however we have in the compositing render layers i have the halo right there and the view layer on top then i mix this two and finally i get this however we do not see the halo because we need to render so i'm going to press f12 and two things are going to happen the first one it's that all of the line art including the line art for the eyes on top of the hair are going to be calculated and the second thing is that every back face call outline that it's done via the solidify modifier, it's also going to be calculated. After everything is being calculated, then the halo is going to be drawn on top and it's going to do exactly our desire, which is that this is overlaid. You can even see small um, shaded gaps there 
which is absolutely fantastic for our artistic purposes. So yes, this is what you get whenever you get Cynthia Wave version 2. Thank you very much. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button because you help the channel and also this content to be produced for every other artist who is looking to use Blender as their anime pipeline.